Mercedes-Benz is preparing for a full-on EV onslaught, courtesy of its Mercedes EQ subbrand, which so far has birthed vehicles like the EQS full-size and EQE mid-size luxury sedans. However, in today's consumer market, if you really want to sell vehicles, you need to offer a crossover, and that's where the simply named EQS SUV comes in. Mercedes isn't the only automaker bringing out tons of new EVs, so if you want to stay updated, be sure to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media. The EQS SUV will be Mercedes EV flagship, for now at least, and you can definitely see a whole lot of family resemblance between this vehicle and its similarly named and controversially styled sedan sibling. That starts out up front with these cool three element LED headlights. These are definitely a hallmark of any S family vehicle. You find three element headlights on the S class sedan, the EQS EV, and even the GLS SUV. From there, you also get a nice big gloss black grille panel that feels very familiar if you've seen any of Mercedes EQ's other products. As in those vehicles, there's a huge centrally mounted Mercedes emblem and tons of tiny little three pointed stars just underneath this panel. What they actually do is they've got a glossy flat surface on the front and on the back they engrave these stars and then paint them silver and then seal them. So it just feels very architectural and technical. Lots of great little details. That continues with the side profile and a very distinct clamshell hood, as well as a pretty neat little washer fluid filler right here. And as you can see, Mercedes one bow shape appears on the EQS SUV as well, starting from just above the front wheel arch and extending all the way to the D-pillar back here. Speaking of that D-pillar, as you can see, it tapers beautifully toward the rear, improving both aerodynamics and, in my opinion, styling, because it makes space for these fantastic hips over the rear wheels, which then dovetail beautifully into a very attractive set of double helix LED taillights that are actually meant to evoke the original Edison light bulbs. It's a great way to kind of call back this vehicle's EV heritage without being super twee, just kind of a cute little wink and a nod to the people who are in the know. If you like the EQS sedan, you're gonna like the crossover too, and if not, well, you're not alone. The EQS SUV looks big and imposing at first blush, but once that initial shock wears off, the smooth forms and arcing design cues begin to look a little bit boring and almost van-like. But clothes do not make the man, and under the skin, the EQS SUV should be just as comfortable and poised as the sedan. That's because it rides atop the same EV-specific platform as both the EQE and the EQS, with trim levels that align with the latter. The base model will be the EQS 450 Plus SUV, a single motor rear drive machine with 355 horsepower and 419 pound feet. Formatic all wheel drive will be optional, although power levels don't change. If you want more, you should definitely go for the EQS 580 Formatic SUV, which has 536 horsepower and an impressive 633 pound feet. The High Rider will also get standard 10 degree rear axle steering, a feature I loved on the EQS sedan. Riding on the same 126.4 inch wheelbase as the EQS sedan, the SUV has a massive passenger compartment, and a higher roofline doesn't hurt matters one bit in spite of the car being about 4 inches shorter overall. As you'd expect for a vehicle that's nominally related to the GLS SUV, there's a third row of seats available as an option. Reclining and sliding second row seats come standard, making it easy to make sure all occupants have enough room to cozy up. However, the EQS isn't quite as spacious as its internal combustion sibling, with only about seven cubic feet of cargo room when all the seats are up. Maximum luggage space with all seats down is 74 cubes, just a bit less than a Tesla Model X, even without considering that vehicle's generously sized frunk and underfloor storage. Still, if you're not a suitcase, you should have no trouble getting comfy in the EQS SUV. Like the exterior, the cabin of the EQS SUV will feel very familiar to anyone who's spent time in other Mercedes EQ products. The EQS 450 will have a more conventional dash layout with a traditional center touchscreen and a digital instrument cluster, but this hyperscreen will be optional or standard if you go for the EQS 580. First of all, since this is an SUV and Mercedes is known for its capability in that realm, the company wanted to include a little extra functionality in the hyperscreen to show that off. That means you get this display right here that shows what your power levels are at at each wheel, shows your position, kind of helps you figure out your inclinometer and everything like that to kind of make sure that you stay on the right path and you keep moving forward no matter what the terrain ahead of you looks like. Beyond that, it's pretty much the standard EQS hyperscreen, which means there's a really cool new zero layer that keeps a map display on screen at all times and overlays useful tiles. There's also a pair of entertainment screens in the rear seat with their own HDMI controls so that you can play PlayStation or bring movies with you and not have to let the fun stop just because you're in the car. 
Both models have a 107.8 kilowatt hour battery, giving the EQS SUV a targeted 373 mile range on the slightly generous WLTP scale. The newest Mercedes crossover can go from 10 to 80% in 30 minutes using a DC fast charger. A 240 volt household wall box will give you a full charge in just over 11 hours, which is adequate for off peak juicing. I'm gonna go out on a limb right now and say that the EQS SUV is probably going to be pretty darn nice to drive, given how pleasant I found both the EQS 450 and 580 sedans the last time I drove them. However you feel about the styling, I'm torn between gracefully futuristic and somehow a little bit van-like, the EQS SUV should be a huge success for the company, giving its customers the size, stature, and flagship halo effect that they want. We don't have official pricing or EPA range estimates just yet, but the US is going to be the first market in which the EQS SUV is launched sometime in the fall, so we shouldn't have to wait too long. Thanks so much for watching.